there's a good article. Pretty good. I'll jump in. This World Beyond the Looking Glass Worldwide cults whose memberships always include the world's political, religious leaders abusing and murdering children. Social organizations, think tanks, news agencies, watchdogs, whistleblowers. People who are supposed to be helping. Like the Red Cross. I managed to create a generalized feeling of hopelessness and fear from continent to continent to continent. Whatever we list first as endangering our survival, I don't know, planets crashing into us, nuclear war, disease, marsification due to climate failure, inexplicable human behavior, Clearly a global phenomenon now. This should be the center of our focus. And we are forced to either accept that there are people so inhumane in nature, capable of abhorrent behavior, not only individually, but within a subconscious community. Everything from terror organizations to business squalls, even national governments, that all work for the same guy. It's above and beyond it now. Secret societies? I don't know. People will point to demons or monsters or angels or... Or it's one religion, not the other one, and these guys are worse than the other ones. But if we go through history, and we will go through history, whoever's in charge claims to be the good guy. Whoever they've just defeated is the bad guy. These corporations, let's just call them degenerate subcultures, if you will. They come under many guises. But to me, they are now appearing to be one. And there are no innocent little groups of the rich and the shameless wearing goat headdresses, dancing around a fire before a baby is eaten, or a cross is spat on, or before the summoning, I guess. To survive, to defend ourselves, we have to finally admit that these cults are real, that they have risen in power on this planet, and they are our judges, they are our bankers, they are our presidents, they are our prime ministers, they run the think tanks, they control the nuclear arsenals, these are the ones dispensing medicine to the kids. They decide what we learn, they decide what we see, they decide what we hear, they decide what we believe. And if you look at the world around you and don't recognize it as a work of a human soul, consider looking for something durable. It's something that matches this phenomenon then because it's become apparent to me that cultural patterns of what do we even call it denialism a universal need to overlook or simply to look away are suicide suicidal for all of us in order to make this thing clear I want it relevant to people on different levels of acceptance, of experience, even sustainability. Because we are going to use, we are going to need to use some care in how things are expressed. 
I am not saying the way people did it. I saw this picture up that black people are starting to wear little cut off Indian heads. Um, not the Indian heads, but now a white guy one. You can't win an argument by being more of an asshole. <laughs> you know what I mean? What the European people have been sent to do was not their knowledge, because it was done to them first. When I go through the history again, we will see how it was done to you. Nobody wanted to be a Christian. Nobody wanted to be a Jew. No one wanted to be a Muslim. <laughs> These religions of Abraham were forced on your people. Yeah, people are making the choice now because, well, they're stupid. And of course, we as a people, okay, stupid is a little harsh. We as people know that the divine exists. And it's all around us and it's in us. We like gathering together. It would be better if it was outside with a fire telling stories. But our basic needs our basic wants, our basic desires have been studied deeply. Religion has come in to take over our spirituality and it's done it. It's done it. I hear people saying, you know, it's the Jews, it's the Catholics, it's the... <sighs> These things are bought and paid for. If you have to tithe to something, do you think God gets that money? All of these ones who say that they are following one God. He wants that money? Does he? Do you think that the creator of all things, all things, everything, wants your money? Okay, the creator of all things, who took the time to make all this wonderful stuff, wants a sacrifice? of a goat, of an animal, of a pigeon, of a li little wafer, eat my body, drink my blood. No, 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 no. And you'll probably say to me, but we're not Catholic, Tracy. Uh -huh. Who made up Christianity? Romans. We'll go into it and I will show you. Yes, there's a bunch of different sects and they all think they're right and they know God better. The Creator, go outside, look at that tree, look at the grass, look at the animals who are there for you to take care of. If these religions had any base in the human soul, one of them would have won by now. And we'd all be following that one. Because it was right. They are not right. Now for some, this information is common. I've been told, and there are those who can tell. And not ask to severely limit what has been written and what has been published. Now consider this in itself a disclosure. That implies authority exists. And whether you trust or believe such an authority, real or imagined, and all such things, one does not see, have to be continually examined, weighed, is something for your own judgment. I'm not the boss of you. All you can do is follow your gut 
and there's no other reliable guide here. We are going to go for a bit of a ride, touching on issues. Non-ordinary reality. Physics. That they don't teach you in kindergarten. They don't need to teach you in kindergarten. Why? Why? Why is there a kindergarten? Why our parents work so much that they take our children when they just learn to speak? Let me tell you why. When you're born, your brains are completely active. There is no right side or left side that is more active. The whole thing lights up like... It's gorgeous looking at a baby's brain. So they take those babies, force them to speak. It doesn't matter what language you're speaking. They've all been corrupted anyway. As soon as that baby begins to speak the language, that brain changes. And within the first five years, some of that brain is dark. It's like it's turned off. And then they put in a new reality. They want your kids. They've had your kids. And now they're going for the fetus. Now they're going for your eggs. Now they're going for your sperm. This has already been done. This is why there's so much mercury. This is why there's so much poison. They are getting you from inception. I'm not talking about conception where we're making love to each other, hopefully. It's not rape. But I'm talking about the idea of having a child from then. They are raping this child. So we're going to be touching on the pedophile rings, the human trafficking. Within the context of human behavior by these so-called elites. The purpose is to provide a reliable set of guidelines as much as possible in order to understand that what can no longer be explained as senselessness or misbehavior not when we are subject to and even in what we are allowed to hear about visions of unimaginable insanity and brutality happening to us on a daily basis. And behind the endless shelling of civilizations and citizens and the kidnapping of entire peoples now, the now officially labeled genocide of an imaginary ISIS organization. I'm going to be talking about ISIS. Maybe Thursday. The beheadings, the mass rapes, the rampage that crosses continents is now all over the planet. There is something more. There is something behind this. This is something that has been planned in Iraq alone. We know that not millions, but over two trillion in oil has been stolen since 2010. Two trillion carried by pipelines and trucks and ships, but it never reaches refineries, never goes into gas tanks is never paid for, never shows up in corporate profits, in political bribes, in money that never exists. Or so we are told to believe. The looting of this planet, whether entire automobile assembly plants hauled away from Syria into Turkey, which we have seen, a veritable lake of oil, 
2,300 Humvees, tens of thousands of slaves, millions, maybe hundreds of millions, 5,000 years of antiquities. The more loot taken, the more cash removed, like the 2.3 trillion the Pentagon misplaced September 10th, 2001, it just vanishes. It's magic. This is magic now. And people just, you know, sit there with their wide-eyed stares and say, but what? When trillions more disappeared 2007, 2008, when the world's banks collapsed and America borrowed imaginary um, magic money to replace the missing non-existent money already who planned this why welcome back everyone you're listening to Trace Elements Radio you know in Canada whistleblower who exposed Canadians with secret Swiss accounts got five years in prison. This man called um, the Edward Snowden of tax evasion gets five years for leaking records on over 106,000 account holders, including about 1,800 from Canada, in a move that led to billions of dollars in unpaid taxes being removed from countries around the world. Removed. To go where? So this whistleblower, Arve Falciani, former head of a computer security at HSBC's private banking arm in Geneva, sentenced in absentia last Friday, convicted of corporate espionage for taking records that showed, proved, that the bank helped move the equivalent of $255 billion client's money. Billion. So, my God, guys. Missing, non-existent money. When savings disappeared, investments vanished, homes became worthless, jobs blew away like sand in the wind. What was the reason? Because today, we aren't just watching a sea of manufactured refugees, perhaps accidental byproduct of conflict, but much more likely something else. When we take 2 million refugees, perhaps 6 million, add them to the two, well, 20,000 female captives of ISIS, Aren't we beginning to touch the problem here? Entire regions of Syria have been flushed into refugee camps in Turkey that don't exist. People supposedly sold at auctions, peddled on eBay, people who have disappeared. But as with endless millions of tons of crude oil, they are never seen again. They are not in the refugee camps, not in the sweatshops, or even in the brothels of London, Kiev, Tel Aviv. They can't all be on the slave ships that are sending the natives from Canada to the United States. But let's look at the United States. Let's go back to the 80s in just a random time we could document based on a branded scandal. So often, we have written of American military and its move towards extremism. This move in the military, one that has sickened those of a genuine spirit, a warrior spirit, a soldier, that's where the word comes from, And such people do exist, I still believe. Isn't simply an apocalypse worship here, speaking in tongues and adherence to the teachings of some moronic, big-headed, racketeering TV evangelist. 
calling this a cult is an oversimplification. Do you feel like someone is staging it all? The entire system, the economics that make no sense, the nations that only serve invisible masters, wars not fought, not started, but staged. Isn't it all like we are performing for the amusement of something perverse? We don't see death like this in Canada. And I realize because I'm up here, Great White North and all. So a couple of events that need a response. Murders. Murders beyond any reasonable explanation. Like Scalia, for one. We've had to, well, we've been pushed to begin examining pedophile rings operating in Europe this time. And within many groups, defense contractors, there are fields of investigators specializing in trafficking. Months ago, physicist Cash brought us a complex and frankly disjointed story of experiences coming across a pedophile ring involving royal families of Belgium and Netherlands, how their activities are tied to individuals in the U.S., Sterling Allen, now awaiting trial, but moreover into Europe and defense and scientific communities as well. We've spoken about the issues in Belgium and the Netherlands many times and how this was a landing zone for child trafficking, sex trafficking, according to the UN and Interpol and the US State Department. We have gotten to know Cash with his new physics, free energy technologies, initially seen by many as a cult, still talked about this today. It's attracted attention from all over the world, Russia, China, European groups within intelligence agencies checking him out. But this is where it gets sticky. It's not just MI5 or 6, but rather rogue and affiliated groups tied to what I will describe as fringe. Freemasonry, if you will, but that isn't even the best category for it. So I will also apologize to Freemasons for the use of this term, because not all Freemasons are like this, like not all Christians are bad, not all Muslims are bad, not all anybody is bad, not all. But the ones in control? Oh yeah. So, I could spend not just months, but years discussing Freemasonry as a social organization, or as in, in Britain, sometimes a cult, sometimes doing great things, sometimes penetrating Scotland Yard and the police, especially here, RCMP, security agencies, once threatening British security, Canadian security, covering up pedophile rings, that continue to rule in Britain, in the United States, in Canada, all over the world. The Murdoch press organization that I've talked about through wiretapping was able to advance Israeli influence in Britain leveraging evidence, tying Downey Street and the palace to these things. This led to minor house, well, public house clearing, I guess. Few aged celebrities and poor aging monsters like Janner, thrown to the wolves. 
during the last hours of their lives, as though three consecutive younger generations haven't, hadn't long stepped into their shoes, enjoying this full protection. So this is what Kesh stepped into. This and the Washington Genneth Todd describes within which he is willing to tell the public or what Jim Hankey describes during his years at the Pentagon where I speak of in an equally limited way what we have found to be going on in Canada with the disappearing children we have found with the refugees who sign in and never land anywhere and they're usually women and children. Let's take an anecdotal look at Franklin. Because you see, every scandal is expanded, fictionalized, subject to the Alex Jones treatment until it's poisoned to the point that no mainstream journalist, no prosecutor, no investigative agency will look at it again. No one in their right mind would believe this sort of thing. The children are disappearing from all over the world and women are being taken from their homes in bed. To go where? Nowhere? Disclosures are seeded of course, with lies in order to kill the investigation. Often agencies themselves take part using terms, conspiracy theories, as an excuse to not look. So when solid evidence came to the FBI that children from famous do you remember Father Flanagan's Boys Town in Nebraska? These people were being trafficked to parties of Washington, D.C. It became a joke, a fiction. It just disappeared. So back to Cash. Cash came with solid proof that Sterling Allen, working through an elite group in Belgium, was operating inside of the free energy community, online recruiting children through sex trafficking. And I'll tell you of another story in Canada that just came out. That your children, who you were allowing on Facebook to talk to strangers, are being targeted, more than targeted, taught, tested, passed around. Do you put your kids' pictures, your young children's pictures, on Facebook? Of course you do. You think, you know, it's fun. People are passing those things around. Facebook is dangerous. I used to, don't get me wrong. But it's not a place that I would let a young child go on alone. Ever. Now, he has presented, Cash, a wealth of solid evidence, videos, emails, more. That a network existed that tied new age types. Not only to online recruiting but to NGOs working in South and Central America and Africa in the Middle East. We've talked about organizations that are running schools and orphanages, Palestinian scholarships, for one, that help for abused or displaced mothers from Lebanon to Morocco to Mexico and Brazil 
all involved stealing children. We have found people in Haiti coming in, taking those children, working under the cloak of um, the Red Cross. We should have known what the Red Cross meant. Now these groups plant themselves near the camps in the Middle East, preying on poor people, Palestinians working or working with ISIS to traffic Syrian and Iraqi children and Shiites and natives and brown people and not just brown people you know that northern Middle East have a a love of your blue-eyed boys but with full support of Turkish organized crime suspected complicity with their intelligence agencies political leadership as well we have traced many to Syria now veterans today they met with the Minister of Justice Syria found himself deeply frustrated how many powerful friends human traffickers seem to have they were able to tie both the US and the Saudi embassies and I told you that the House of Saud was going to come big this year now I'm the embassies in Beirut, of course, along with a series of NGOs operating in the Ukraine, in Romania, in Macedonia, in Turkey, in the Congo, working side by side with Al Nursa and ISIS, in Iraq and Syria, anywhere, anywhere the mining companies go. Now they won't talk to you about this at Veterans Today. Cuts too close to home. But where they are extracting minerals and resources, they are extracting your kids. Aid workers, journalists, move freely through these areas. Some representing Syrian Human Resources Observatory, so they say, names such as that. Other newspapers such as the UK Independent or online blogs tied to Israeli or CIA or MI6 funding or CSIS. Similar meetings with governments in Africa. Now one or two all confronted powerful economic and political groups that are clearly behind human trafficking. So in August 2015, they arranged for Cash to meet with an FBI in Rome to hand over the evidence. As many now know, computers seized on January 15, 2016 by the FBI by an agent Jeff Ross in Salt Lake City, Utah contained files that listed high-level clients details of their preferences and enough to secure a kind of protection we had been seeing in Libya Lebanon, Syria Nigeria, Morocco, Turkey, Belgium, Britain, Ireland, and the United States. Because somebody clearly has a preference for the Irish. So the information that came out on veterans today was that Justice Scalia of the U.S. Supreme Court who was protecting Sterling Allen despite nearly two years of him doing everything imaginable to be arrested was confirmed. 
their report on Scalia's murder at the hands of a secret society tied to Bohemian Grove and satanic cults and such was also confirmed and was their information that only after Scalia's death could Sterling Allen be arrested. So we've seen the spin that has been tied to move what is solid evidence into a conspiracy theory. So it will just go away through wild misrepresentations of Scalia-Obama meetings or blaming Obama personally for a pillow over the face, suffocation, killing, partial confirmation as well. Particularly, as we show sources of these fabrications and put them into the midst of Washington's pedophilic sewer. So we catch a flurry of internet troll activity, especially attacking cash by associates of Sterling Allen, but many more. I hear that a lot. You can trace the origins of at least one group that began with a left-handed confession that we are not pedophiles. We took a look. Okay, more than a look. And then you come to a group in Morocco with minor petty history. Well, petty internet fraud, bizarre new age tail spinning that landed a gig running an orphanage that was quickly cited as a way station for human traffickers. Come, take your pick. So, as they so often say, they are unable to comment more on any kind of ongoing investigation. So thus far, Cash has been willing to name names of those who are involved and only at a very real risk, much more risk than an army of trolls and child traffickers pouring out lies. Thus we direct, we use more direct evidence, put it that way, things we personally have seen. Now this is from Veterans Today, with the best sources possible working through existing narratives, paying close attention to how stories are poisoned, how investigations are squashed, but moreover, how things tie together. This is new territory. What I'm forced to explain is abhorrent human behavior. Now, going back to 2000, a criminal cabal overthrows the U.S. government through the Supreme Court. Monsanto is completely in charge of your Supreme Court now. They don't say this at Veterans Today, but if you want me to go into this at another time, I will. But they have been able to establish it, partly at least, five judges of the nine that supported this move against the corporation. At least three members are secret societies, minimally considered satanic. Well, Monsanto, yeah, I'm saying, yeah, they're messing with our DNA. That's not good. So, can only assume that two others are influenced in some way to take part in a group. Assured that Al Gore would be silenced, that news media would play along as they do since they're owned by the cabal. Now, clearly under the promise that America would begin a series of wars on behalf, they say Israel, 
Now, Veterans Today is big against Israel, but never mentions that America helped create it. But, it's a... It's in charge of a lot in the background, even though a lot of, well, most of the people who are in Israel right now that are controlling it are European, and the majority of them are, drumroll please, Polish, which, part of the royalty from Europe, but that's okay, I don't blame Europeans for this. I don't blame the Kazarians for this. I don't. It's a few, I don't know, follow the money, few rich white guys doing this. And of course, it's not only rich white men doing this. Look at Africa. Africa, who sometimes, yeah, I'm, people may think that I'm all like, go Africa. No, no, they are mutilating their girls there for religion's names. Mutilating them so horribly. They are terrified of men and still feel the need to marry one, even though their genitals are horrifically scarred. Sex would be a re-traumatization every time you do it. And, and you know, they beat them in the chest as children too, so they won't have women's breasts when they grow up. Yeah, at this point I'm I'm leaning towards, let's burn everything to the ground and just start again. So, here, years later, the same groups that run children out of Africa and the Middle East and Canada now peddle wild rumors about 9-11 and poisoning even a 15-year-old event now entering America's memory. Banks of horrors, along with the Kennedy murders that are now in our global consciousness, of course. Now here's the crux. We have to come to grips with the denial we collectively believe in politics, in governments, in the pictures we see, in the narratives created for our amusement. Almost as though we are the mindless politicians that they hire as actors, no more than that. When you see ISIS with their shiploads of new trucks from America, all dressed well, their captives are all dressed in American prison garb. Same little jumpsuits. Or Baku Haram, the great haters of technology, barefoot with their satellite phones. And no one asks, who, who paid for those Toyota? Whose platinum card picks up the sat phone bill? We are no better than those we subsidize to lie to us. And let's look at Scalia and at the St. Hubertus group, a subset. We are all informed of the Bohemian Grove, this secret society, all up in your face. We know that those involved are selected not just money and power, but their history of more flexibility, a love of power, combined with mediocre, at best, intellect, physical cowardice, delusions of somehow being special, because every group who takes over control somehow thinks they are the chosen ones. They are special. Do you want to go to the island? So we have at least established a baseline for what is normal. Dirty sex fantasies, debasement, various forms of self-loathing, simple hedonism, 
have always been part of the human condition and signs of these drives, or the potential for these drives, may well exist in many, possibly most of us. We're a little kinky. But there's a difference here. Not everyone acts on these things. Even though these things are pushed in our face all the time, we are shown these images so we be like this. So acting on this. Most are restrained by a moral compass. Even though that's been almost beat out of us. And yes, some with a religious belief or common sense or a long a subject of cultural and social examination. But we have the other stuff. A drive for sexual gratification is one thing. Our literature, our television, our films obsess with the idea of sexual violence. Sexuality and violence we've talked about before in greater and greater quantities are being handed to us served on a silver platter and particularly when it applies to serial killings and serial killers our heroes now there seems to be a new love amongst those who decide on our mass media and trainment for depicting debasement, the slaughter of women, young, sometimes very young, children, all instantly objectified, then cut down somehow, presented to the audience as a wasted commodity. Could have toyed with that child for months. Why did they have to kill it? off all at once. Now picture yourself invited to join some select group, a club, a cult, told that you are special. You are designated. You are the elect. Now, this isn't a street gang as depicted on television where you have to kill an innocent bystander to earn your street cred or is in very real life. How when taking a position with law enforcement agency, joining Congress, or even a state legislator, you are blood, photo, snorting coke, or prone call girl, or a boy that you've rented. That was old politics. Long since not enough not meeting what is expected. So here's the story. Years ago, not quite 30, talking with a former Jesuit named Malachi Martin. Gotten to know Friar Martin while working in New York. Not me, of course. Martin had been working in the Vatican had been forced out by what he called satanic cabal amongst the Jesuits. But they do follow the Dark Father and give allegiance to him. But again, in these groups, not everyone knows everything, and why would they read? Now, he claimed that he had been in contact with demonic entities, believe it or not, had consecrated the Holy See in the name of Satan after receiving proof of a manifestation of the power of evil. Now, physically happened to him? I wasn't there. But Martin said they cut a deal or give him promises. Some very material in nature. According to Martin, the rewards reaped by the Jesuits were material as well. That relationship 
involve participating in ceremonies it's depicted in not only dozens of films but in ancient carvings as well human sacrifice killing of children often newborn infants dancing chanting incarnations wearing headdresses depicting something horned these vatican rites that martin makes reference to in windswept house and his other best-selling books are also Innocent Ceremonies of Bohemian Grove or Hubertus or the yearly get-togethers at Solstice in Denver or at the Rothschilds compound on Carfu. Martin said this of the Jesuits they simply tried Christianity and tired of it the unanswered prayers they sought another voice on the end of the phone and such a voice was there waiting for them and the church of today is what it is based on them abandoning God not on a loss of faith but on God's unwillingness to meet their price as a real creator of everything would would have no need for a little sacrifices or a little stuff or a little tithing because he made everything why would he need it so apparently this Martin saw things within the definitions of good and evil within the litany of the church and its rituals and its history and its traditions particularly the rite of exorcism something that he had performed hundreds of times what we have to ask ourselves is what we are willing to believe and if what we don't believe is because we don't know or because we simply don't care is skull and bone such a group my answer would be yes of course whether the supernatural is real or not one must note that all religions all faiths is a belief in the supernatural real or otherwise implied or otherwise and the difference between entities and their purpose is only the difference between light and dark one stick different ends So is there a difference between Christian evangelist to medic Zionist? Who crosses the line? Who crosses it? How much? If these Jesuits worship Lucifer, a fallen angel, we are told, perhaps bringing on decades of worldwide abuse of children hundreds of cases hundreds of thousands millions uncounted deaths covered up and we're one to look at a map conflict upon conflict driven by the unholy three rogue offshoots of a religion the religions of the book is there a synopsis I would say there is I'm going to pre present you as such as we go on it is an old marriage of neocon Bolsheviks and Christian evangelists working hand in hand with what we call the Illuminati share a commonality a love of evil Ferengi style a deal with the devil a suffering an entropy a decline a debasement a sea of lies of hate of cruelty of greed amongst greed above all it builds to I think an inevitable end 
is this what we're seeing right now? So as I promised you a story, here it is. One of the writers at Veterans Today is a long associate of Nathan Rothschild. So take this as gospel truth, which is supposedly true, or decide the whole thing is a story and means nothing. Let's try to use care. Prejudice filled out, at least filtered. So here it goes. The Rothschild family, according to a highly placed source, cut a deal four centuries ago with an unseen power. This power, he was told, according to the Rothschilds, is not evil, is not satanic or anything like it. They just came on entities somewhere in Germany long ago and agreed to help the family gain power, earthly dominion, if you will, in exchange for just a couple of things. Each male member of the family would, at age 25, go through a ceremony, investiture. Is that the word? So, this Rothschild or Goldsmith or whatever, perhaps Young Bush, no proof of this, allows an unseen entity to enter them. This entity, as they tell it, lives outside time and space, has been on Earth for hundreds of thousands of years. And we have talked about and people have seen what happens in places like Skull and Bones in the school where they're lying in a coffin. This is their story as told by someone who was never supposed to pass it on. That there is no aspect of good or evil involved. Only a deal. To use their power and gifts of an unseen entity to create vibrations that feed their newfound friend. These vibrations are maximized through hate and suffering, not having anything to do with evil itself, but simply out of coincidence alone. We have seen them wearing masks, dancing in circles, debasing, murdering children, starting wars running central banks. I see that as part of it. What is also supposed to be true is that these secret societies include the highest level of Freemasonry, all tossed around like internet candy that involves ceremonies, like out of 1960 Hammer Studio films, with Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. ISIS is no more Islam than the murderers. They are no more Dominicans than the Christians. No more Cadassians. Well, Gazarians. They are not Jews. I don't make a case about Catholics, Jews. Zionists, Muslims here. The evidence out there says this is something else we deal with. So, what's it like having a hundred thousand year old devil inside you? Would beheading hundreds, kidnapping, raping, 20,000 women dropping a nuclear bomb on the village in Yemen makes sense then to these people and I use the term only reluctantly who privately boast of hoisting real or imagined monstrosities right out of Captain Kirk Star Trek episode kind of stuff feeding their familiars 
with vibes. We will go into stories about this in the next couple weeks. And we will look at the Nazca lines and see the spider who feeds on vibration. I think this is the same story. Now back in 2011, a CBS News poll asked American adults they believed in invisible beings. 80% said yes. Most referred to angels, unspecific as to fallen or not, as to their no seems of choice. In 1998, CBS New York Times poll had 63% of Americans believing in demonic possession as well. Then again, 2012 National Geographic poll has 77% of Americans believing aliens visited Earth. 2010 Reuters poll said 20% worldwide believe aliens live amongst us. 2013, 20% of Republicans voters believe Obama is the Antichrist. Same poll, 30% believe the world is ruled by secret societies. I don't know. I'm not ready to join these people. It is one thing to believe things for the common man, continually subjugated to mind control, minimally in the guise of news, which is entertainment only. If you watch the news, you can see the disclaimer at the end. But I further suspect, perhaps much further, that we've all seen things that we all know there are things out there that we cannot define what I can't say here as fact is that someone believes they have teamed up with beings that came to earth while we were children I mean mankind in its infancy and these beings have waited. There are more questions. If you accept any of this is true, if it's not true, and it may well not be true, then the power of suggestion itself may be the new world order. That the insanity that we're seeing, that I, I think is obvious now, has been from the mercury we are breathing in. You know, when we see acts of vandalism, like on, in one day on April 10th, April 10th, which seemed to be a day of burning worldwide, that totem poles all over Canada went up in flames, caught fire, when I was telling you our beliefs that's ours people from all over the world believe these are our ancestors what is going on are these humans and you know I don't like to point to was an alien because that seems like a cop out to me but in a world where domestic violence is leaving children traumatized where people are being thrown off of reservations for marrying outside of their community this had never happened before where women and children are in more danger at home than they are from walking in the streets we have an emergency care system in Canada 
that they're seeing more and more children beaten half to death in it from people who are supposed to be taking care of them. We have found more unmarked graves discovered in Indian schools all across Canada, all across the United States, but all across Europe too. If it's a church and it had your kids, they killed some of those kids. I would like to say that apartheid has never died. It has just moved on. Maybe gone underground. Is that easier to look at? You know, when we talked about the murder of 34 minors in South Africa by the cops, of course, most of them shot in the back, it puts paid to the illusion of post-apartheid democracy illuminates the new worldwide apartheid of which South Africa is just historic and a contemporary model. In 1894, long before the infamous Africanus, whatever the word is, this spread all over the world. It is not gone. It is now part of all of us. Join me Thursday. We will continue.